then we've got our sample vials, alcohol, and our sampling tray. We're gonna go hunt some earthworms. Well, the worms are irritated by this mustard and it causes them to come up to avoid it. Think you know a thing or two about worms? Great for fishing, for sure. But what you may not know is that many kinds of worms are actually invasive species. Ecologist Cindy Hale is educating people about stopping the spread of non-native worms. The Western Great Lakes region, which is the area we're focused on, um, have no native earthworms. Worms do benefit many crops, aerating and enriching the soil with nutrients, but they can also damage forests. Those two ecosystems are completely different. Hale showed us a state park mostly untouched by worms seedlings, small trees, large trees, and all the age classes of the forest are present. Then a severely invaded area near the University of Minnesota Duluth campus. Here you see a very, very open understory plant population with literally just a few plants. In a system that doesn't have earthworms, you get very clear boundaries between the soil and the organic matter. And you can see how the earthworm really changes the structure, the chemistry, the nutrient dynamics, and the habitat for all the organisms that live in that soil. She says worms literally eat the rooting zone out from underneath the plants, removing habitat for seeds, young plants, even small animals. Student volunteers, backed up by the Great Lakes Worm Watch website, are reaching out to anglers, urging them to trash unused bait. Indiscriminate dumping of worms can spread infestation. They were really shocked at you know something that small and that we don't really talk about too much could really ca cause some potential damage. Our resort owners are really great. They really, really want to do their part. Spreading the word and keeping tabs on these invasive species could help stop them from worming their way into more hardwood forests. For Science Nation, I'm Miles O'Brien.